welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel uh, in our series of uh, videos on ventilator today we will be dealing with ventilator waveforms ventilator waveforms are graphical representations of how a breath is delivered real time information about ventilator patient interaction and ventilator function is depicted by the ventilator waveforms the ventilator waveforms basically include free scalars plotted against time that is the pressure time scalar volume time scalar and the flow time scalar and there are also commonly two loops the pressure and flow against volume loop that is pressure volume loop and flow volume loop pressure and flow are measured variables while volume of each breath is a calculated variable and the uh, volume represents the entire breath from the beginning of like inspiration to the end of expiration the pressure time scalar it provides information about the airway compliance so here basically the pressure and time are plotted in the y and the x axis so it is pressure versus time the airway pressure is depicted as a function of time in pressure control ventilation the pressure delivered is a constant and hence the pressure scalar is square shaped and in volume control ventilation the pressure scalar is ascending due to the rise in pressure with constant flow pattern here you can see the pressure time scalar of a volume control ventilation where pressure is plotted against time and here the uh, first a is a ventilator initiated mandatory breath and here there is a positive uh, pressure rising immediately at the beginning of inspiration and the b is a uh, patient triggered pa patient initiated mandatory breath and that is depicted with a negative reflection at the beginning and here the pressure is starting from like 5 that means peep the peep set is 5 okay from 5 the pressure is increasing and it increases in the phase of inspiration reaches a maximum point and then it decreases and in patient initiated breath there is a deflection that is there is a initial dip in the pressure which which is depicting the patient trigger and then from that dip the pressure is increasing so this is the pressure time scalar of a volume control ventilation this graph is representing the pressure time curve of the pressure control ventilation here a constant pressure is being maintained that is why the pressure time curve is having a square waveform here also the a is depicting the uh, ventilator initiated breath and b is depicting the patient initiated breath these graphs are depicting the pressure time scalars of a spontaneous breath so here it is like a spontaneous breath it is having a sinusoidal pattern and the b is a pressure support breath that is there is a dip, uh, dip in the pressure because of patient trigger and a certain pressure support uh, that is set as 10 cm of water is being provided during the breath so a is a spontaneous breath which is showing a sinusoidal pattern and b is a pressure support breath having a pressure support of 10 cm of water
so in basically in a pressure time waveform the baseline pressure is the peak the maximum pressure at the ends of the curve is the peak inspiratory pressure then there is an entity known as a plateau pressure or the peak plate that is the pressure under static condition that is the airway pressure under static condition which means airway pressure when there is no air flow so this plateau pressure is measured by a procedure known as end inspiratory hold so the ventilator itself will be having a procedure for end inspiratory hold when we do the procedure that is when we press the button for the uh, inspiratory hold then after like around 5 seconds or 3 seconds of inspiratory mm -hmm. hold it will show the pressure of the uh, airway at that point and that will be the plateau pressure and next you have the formula like the peak inspiratory pressure is the sum of the airway pressure the uh, peep, uh, peep and the plateau pressure the peak in pressure is the sum of the airway pressure, the peep and the plateau pressure. So here you can see uh, the, uh, the pressure time scalar. In the first graph, it is uh, that of a pressure control ventilation where the, you have a square shaped pressure time scalar. And uh, the uh, second scalar is a volume control breadth. And uh, in the below graph, you can see that uh, there is a peep, that is a baseline pressure. Then the maximum pressure is a peak inspiratory pressure. So in the first above graph, you can see that there is a maximum pressure, that is the peak inspiratory pressure is the maximum pressure and peep is the baseline pressure. It is similar in both the pressure targeted mode and the volume targeted mode. And in the below graph, you can see that there is a baseline pressure is so a peak. The peak inspiratory pressure is a maximum pressure. And at the end of uh, inspiration, there is a hold. And uh, that is depicting the plateau pressure. When there is no air flow, the pressure of the air due to the airway resistance is zero. And hence, the resultant value will be the P plateau. When there is a large difference between the peak inspiratory pressure and the P plateau, it means that there is a high airway resistance. And there comes another entity that is the intrinsic peep or the auto peep and it can be measured by a procedure known as expiratory hole or the end expiratory hole. So here you can see that the first graph, it is a pressure time scalar showing the first one is a no baseline normal setting where there is a peak inspiratory pressure and a P plateau. And second one, when there is an increased airway resistance, the peak inspiratory pressure will increase but the P plateau will be static. So, the, as, the, uh, as the peak inspiratory pressure increase with the static P plateau, the difference between the PIP and the P plateau increases. And it shows there is an increased airway resistance. That is, peak inspiratory pressure is a sum of P plateau, P and the pressure due to the airway resistance. When there is increased airway resistance with the static P plateau, the peak inspiratory pressure will increase. That is, when there is increase in peak inspiratory pressure without increase in P plateau, it is depicting an increased airway resistance. And the last one in the above graph is showing the condition of decreased compliance. Here, the peak inspiratory pressure will increase and the P plateau also will increase so that the difference between the peak inspiratory pressure and the P plateau remains unchanged. So, the condition where there is the increase in both the peak inspiratory pressure and the P plateau with maintained P, uh, difference between the peak inspiratory pressure and P plateau maintained unchanged is depicting 
decreased compliance. The below graph is showing the procedure of end expiratory hold from which we can get the intrinsic peep or the auto peep. So, in this graph, there is a baseline peep is satisfied, and at the end of expiration, we will do a hold that is the end expiratory hold, and after this, we will get to know the intrinsic peep or the auto peep developed within the alveoli and that is coming as 5. So, in net effect, the patient is having a total peep of 10. So, we have dealt with the pressure time scalar, the commonly seen patterns in pressure time scalar in the different modes of ventilation and now we are moving to volume time scalar. So, volume time scalar here, the volume is plotted against time. Volume time scalar, it is depicting the amount of gas delivered to lung over time. So, the upslope is depicting inspiratory volume and the downslope is depicting expiratory volume. So, when there is a difference in the inspiratory and expiratory volume seen, then we should know that there might be an air leak or otopy. So, a difference in inspiratory and expiratory volume is seen in air leak or otopy. This is a volume time scalar. The upslope is depicting the inspiration. The downslope is depicting the expiration. And in the second graph, you see that the expiratory limb is not reaching back the baseline and that is some volume is missing in the expiration and that is uh, because of a potential air leak. Again, you can see the volume time curve. A normal volume time curve is depicted in the first graph, that is the graph A. In graph B, the expiratory curve has not reached to the baseline, indicating the air leak from the ventilator's expiratory limb or because of an auto peep. The third graph or the graph C is depicting that the expiratory curve is dropping below the baseline because of active exhalation from the patient side. So, if the patient is actively exhaling, then the expiratory curve will drop below the baseline and in some cases it can also be because of the calibration inaccuracy of the flow transducer. Apart from evaluating for the air leak or the auto peep, the volume time scalar is also very effective in identifying the effect of ventilator settings on tidal volume. For example, you have increased the uh, pressures in a vent uh, of your ventilator setting because like the tidal volume achieved was not uh, up to your expectation or due to some reason you have increased or decreased the uh, pressures. So, you want to know if the change is happening in the uh, volume. So, the uh, volume time scalar will show the change in the volume uh, that is the effect of the ventilator setting on tidal volume will be identified from the volume time scalar. The flow time scalar is the third entity. So, uh, it shows the gas flow in between the ventilator and the patient. Here also, the inspiratory flow is a positive pattern and the expiratory flow is a negative pattern. That is, inspiratory flow will be above the baseline and uh, its expiratory flow will be below the baseline. And the area under the curve of the flow uh, time scalar will give us an idea about the volume. So, here... The flow time scalar will have a square flow pattern in volume control ventilation. That is the area under the curve is 
a stable or a constant thing that is in volume control ventilation a constant volume is being delivered so the square flow pattern is seen in volume control ventilation here the tidal volume the inspiratory time and the inspiratory flow are fixed there is a constant flow during inspiration which shortens the inspiratory timing and prolongs the expiratory time so here there is a higher peak inspiratory pressure that is uh, there will be like a uh, fast flow or a, in a short time uh, to reach the target volume the flow will be in a short time and this will this will lead to a higher peak inspiratory pressure and hence the risk of ventilator uh, induced lung injury is also seen in the volume control ventilation. Pressure targeted mode, it will show a decelerating and descending ramp flow. So the peak inspiratory pressure and inspiratory time are set and hence the flow is variable. So the peak flow is delivered at the beginning of inspiration and the flow is subsequently decreased until the set volume is delivered or the targeted pressure is reached. So there will be a lower peak inspiratory pressure and increased mean airway pressure and there will be a prolonged inspiratory time. So this shows the various flow time curve. Graph A is showing volume control ventilation flow time curve where there is a square flow pattern and it is leading to a higher peak inspiratory pressure and shorter inspiratory time. B and C are the decelerating and descending ramps seen in pressure control and pressure support ventilation. There the peak inspiratory pressure will be lower and there will be a longer or prolonged inspiratory time. And C uh, and D is uh, depicting a sine waveform pattern that may increase the peak inspiratory pressure and may be used in a volume control ventilation. So basically volume control ventilation commonly has a square waveform where there is a constant flow and increased peak inspiratory pressure and a shorter inspiratory time. The pressure control ventilation will have a decelerating or descending flow time scalar where there will be a lower peak inspiratory pressure and a longer inspiratory time. So here you can see the auto peep in a flow time scalar. The dotted line is representing the normal pattern and the bold line is depicting the air trapping or auto peep. So in air trapping or auto peep the expiratory limb is not reaching the baseline. So there is a small uh, area that is not reaching back the baseline and it is showing the auto peep or the air trap and below you can see the pressure time scalar in which at the end uh, after an end expiratory hold we will come to know about the auto peep.
the shape of expiratory limb of the flow time curve is affected by the air flow resistance and compliance of the lungs. Higher airway resistance due to any obstruction that can be like a bronchospasm or any mucus plug or any obstruction. Here the flow scalar will show decreased peak expiratory flow and prolonged time for the expiratory limb to reach the baseline. And in condition with a decreased compliance, the peak expiratory flow rate increases. Here you can see the condition with a low compliance where the peak expiratory flow rate is higher. Next comes the entity of stress index. This is commonly de uh, depicted in a pressure time scalar. It is a coefficient derived from pressure scalar during volume control ventilation. Stress index is of much use in basically the ARDS ventilation. Here you can see that in a pressure time graph, the black line is the normal pressure time graph that is having a constant compliance and constant stress and hence the stress index is equal to 1. It is a straight pressure time curve and here the stress index is equal to 1. When there is an upward concavity of the pressure time curve, there will be a decreased compliance and increased stress. That is, stress index will be more than 1. When there is an upward concavity, the stress index is more than 1. That is, it will peak and the peak inspiratory pressure increases and also the P plateau increases. So, the peak inspiratory pressure and P plateau both increase without much change in the difference of peak inspiratory pressure and P plateau which is depicting a low compliance and such condition the stress index is more than 1 and the green dotted line is showing a downward concavity of the pressure time curve. Here the peak inspiratory pressure decreases and also the P plateau decreases and it is showing increasing compliance and decreasing stress that is stress index is less than 1. So, in upward concavity stress index is more than 1. Here uh, stress index more than 1 means it has decreasing compliance and downward concavity of pressure time curve means stress index is less than 1. Stress index is less than 1 means it is an increasing compliance. The first one you see is a normal that stress index is equal to 1. Then stress index is more than 1 depicted by upward concavity that is decreasing compliance and it is commonly seen in over distended conditions. And stress index is less than 1 that is increasing compliance and is seen in tidal recruitment. So, here you can again see a pressure time uh, scalar where you have the baseline pressure is the peak, then the peak pressure that is the peak inspiratory pressure is the maximum pressure, then the plateau pressure is the constant pressure that we get at the end of inspiration that is a static pressure that is the plateau pressure. Then you have an entity known as the driving pressure that is the difference between the plateau pressure and the peak. And the respiratory system compliance is equal to tidal volume divided by plateau pressure minus P. That is tidal volume divided by the driving pressure. So, as the driving pressure increases, the system respiratory system compliance decreases. And the, as the driving pressure decreases, the compliance improves or compliance increases. So, we have discussed our uh, 
flow, uh, volume time, pressure time and flow time scalars. Now we are going to the commonly used loops in ventilator. These are the basic ventilator loops that we uh, see in the ventilator. So one is a pressure volume loop and next one is a flow volume loop. So pressure volume loop, it has an inspiratory length that is a sigmoidal curve and then it, it is the counterclockwise pattern. So it has an inspiratory length and an expiratory length and the flow is in a counterclockwise pattern. So in the initial flat part, there, the, it is depicting the movement of air in the collapsed airways with low compliance. Then there is a middle steep part which is depicting the lung recruitment. And again there is flattening of curve which is depicting the end of inspiration. Here you can see the pressure volume loop of a ventilator initiated mandatory breath with volume control ventilation. The loop starts at the set peep of 5 and there is an inspiration limb and an expiration limb and it is going in a counterclockwise direction. So initially there is a flat part that is depicting the air entry into collapsed alveoli and there comes the lung recruitment part or the distension part where it is a steep slope and again after that there is be, there will be a flat part which is showing the end of inspiration and the graph returns to, through the expiratory limb. There are certain entities known as the inflection points. So, there is a lower inflection point which is depicting the opening of the collapsed alveolar units and after the lower inflection point, there will be a sharp rise in volume. So, the steep part after the lower inflection point, it is where the compliance is high and increased volume into airways leads to small increase in pressure. So, the steep part after the lower inflection point even with small increase in volume, there, uh, even with large increase in volume, there will be like small increase in pressure. After that, there is a uh, upper inflection point where again the compliance is low. Basically, these are used in volume control modes. So here you can see that there is a lower inflection point and the upper inflection point and uh, the target is to keep the peep above the lower inflection point and the plate, maintain the plate of pressure below the upper inflection point. So here you can see that the initially there is a flat or a small rise in uh, volume with a more increase in pressure. Then after that there is a sudden increase in the volume and further after the upper inflection point there will be a, there is a beaking is denoted here. It means that even with larger increase in pressure the volume won't change. That is, if you are giving more pressure and uh, more, more and more pressure, the volume won't increase after that point. So, uh, this will lead to barrel trauma. If you go on giving more and more pressure, but the volume won't increase, so pressure related barrel trauma may uh, arise. So, if a beaking, such a form of graph is seen, if a beaking like appearance is seen, it is meaning that there is some over distension. So, we will have to reduce the volume in such condition. We will have to bring down the volume to prevent the over distension related lung injury. Now, you have the flow volume loops. The flow volume loops are basically determined by lung mechanics. So, it is of much use in 
depicting or like in predicting the uh, effectiveness of a bronchodilator therapy and also in detecting autopy. So when you are like giving a bronchodilator to a patient with a respiratory uh, bronchospasm or like increased resistance, you can know the imp imp uh, improvement. You can see the improvement in the patient lung status or the respiratory mechanics from the flow volume loop. And also it's helping no noticing auto peep or air trapping. It is a flow uh, volume loop and the inspiration uh, and expression is like seen above and below the baseline and it is in a clockwise pattern. So, uh, when the peak expiratory flow rate, that is uh, the maximum uh, point in expiration, if the peak expiratory flow rate is lower, it is show, uh, depicting some obstruction. And the, uh, there will be some scooped out appear, uh, appearance also uh, in obstruction. And when there is air trapping, the expiratory limb does not reach the baseline. And when there are air leaks, the inspiratory and expiratory limb volumes are different. So here you can see that uh, first one graph A is a typical flow volume loop with inspiration on the top, expiration on the bottom. Graph B a vo flow volume loop showing the air obstructive airflow pattern with lower peak expiratory flow uh, that from the uh, like depth of that expiratory graph you know that the peak expiratory flow is the maximum point of like that expression that is lower in the second graph that is because of a obstruction in airflow and there is a scooped out appearance in the expiratory limb that is also because of obstruction in the airflow and since there is an obstruction in airflow it will lead to air trapping which is depicted by the uh, expiratory limb not returning back to the baseline. So, the re reduced peak expiratory flow, the scooped out appearance, both of this show the obstructive airflow pattern that can be because of a bronchospasm, that can be because of some mucus plug or any other small obstruction and these things leading into air trapping because complete expiration is not happening and the air trapping is depicted by the expiratory limb not returning back to the baseline. So here you see the flow volume loop where like the improvement in the uh, expiratory volume is seen following a bronchodilator therapy. So here uh, the uh, dotted lines uh, show that there is a reduced peak expiratory flow rate on the uh, flow volume loop that is because of an increased air resistance. So it can be because of a bronchospasm and when you are giving the bronchodilator therapy the, uh, the improvement is depicted by the solid line and it shows that the peak expiratory flow rate is increased and the expiratory uh, curve more to a linear shape. That scooped out appearance is also absent now. So, the dotted lines are showing the bronchospasm or the airway resistance pattern with a reduced peak expiratory flow and the scooped out appearance. And post bronchodilator therapy, it has improved, depicted by the solid line that the peak expiratory flow rate has improved and also the scooped out appearance has vanished and it has become more linear. Here the flow volume loop is showing the auto peep or the air trapping. It is depicted in such a way that the uh, expiratory limb does not reach back to the baseline. That is the loop doesn't completely close. The expiratory limb doesn't reach back to baseline and it uh, Inspiratory curve uh, doesn't close. The flow volume loop doesn't close. 
so it is depicting the autopy so uh, now we will be dealing with some of the conditions some of the trouble uh, shooters or some of the problems uh, that is arising during ventilation that we can pick up from the ventilator waveforms uh, most of these things we have already dealt with throughout these slides so we will be just refreshing some of the troubles which we can come to know from the uh, ventilator graph these are the like commonly seen or the ba uh, basic normally uh, normally seen or the commonly seen troubleshooters are dealt with so uh, one thing is the auto peep so here as already discussed the flow time curve the expiratory curve fails to return to the baseline and similarly in the flow volume loop the expiratory curve doesn't reach the starting point that is uh, and other thing is the pressure time curve where uh, we can hold the end exp uh, end expiratory hole and we will come to know about the auto peak and the uh, other uh, problems are the increased resistance conditions increased resistance condition as i have already told it will be indicated by increased peak inspiratory pressure with the static p plateau so that the difference between the peak inspiratory pressure and p plateau uh, is increased so when the peak inspiratory pressure increase without an increase in the p plateau it is pointing towards the increased airway resistance and when the peak inspiratory pressure increase along with an increase in the p plateau it is depicting a decreased compliance so this is again showing the auto peep on flow time curve that is the uh, expiratory limb is not returning back to the baseline and uh, before the uh, next inspiration it is not coming to the baseline so it is depicting an auto peep then again it is showing a flow volume loop with the auto peep where the loop doesn't completely close then the next things that we can come to know from the ventilator waveforms are the ventilator patient asynchrony so the ventilator patient asynchrony can be either because of the patient related factors or because of the ventilator related factors so the patient related factors include the lung mechanics the respiratory drive that is like the level of sedation level of neuromuscular blockade all those things are the patient related factors the ventilator factors are the sensitivity setting the flow delivery the cycle of criteria the mode of ventilation and the degree of ventilator support so the ventilator uh, dyssynchrony it is basically like of uh, three types the first is a flow dyssynchrony so there is an entity known as a flow starvation that is the patient isn't getting enough air to meet the metabolic demand so in the pressure time curve it is normally a convex shape of inspiratory limb uh, that is the convex normal convex shape is punched down or concave that is a flow starvation and there will be a drop in the airway pressure so here you can see that in a pressure volume loop the inspiratory limb there is a scooping uh, appearance or a uh, like concave like appearance it is because the, uh, that the inspiratory flow is not adequate for the patient demand so because of the patient actively trying to take in more the, the uh, flow starvation is happening here again it is showing the flow dyssynchrony in a pressure time scalar so the first is a normal uh, curve with adequate flow concave inspiratory curve and uh, second one is showing a drop in the airway pressure and also uh, it is scooped or concave the uh, first one is a convex inspiratory limb but here it is a concave inspiratory limb with a scooped like appearance and also the uh, the airway pressure has also come down so it is indicating the flow dyssynchrony or the flow starvation
and uh, in a flow starvation or uh, flow dyssynchrony if the patient is uh, actively taking effort to draw in more air flow during inspiration it will show a figure of eight like pattern so basically it's the figure of eight like pattern and it basically occurs due to the act of patient inspiration creating a negative pressure and also the scoped out inspiratory curve is there uh, that is a flow starvation and uh, the uh, before that there is a small uh, dip in the pressure that is uh, because of the negative pressure created by the patient trying to initiate the inspiration and also uh, at the end of the inspiration there is a small beaking like appearance it is because the patient is trying to exhale against the closed expiratory valve so if you have a flow starvation uh, we have to increase the flow rate or change from volume ventilation to a pressure ventilation so we have to increase the flow rate because it is patient is not getting adequate flow uh, to meet the demand so we have to increase the flow rate or we have to change from a volume control ventilation to a pressure control ventilation uh, if you are seeing a flow dyssynchrony next is a trigger dyssynchrony that is a patient's breathing effort is not enough to trigger the ventilatory support uh, it can be because of the development of auto peep or it can be because of insensitive settings so here uh, the uh, deflection negative deflection is a patient's breathing effort but it is not producing a uh, breath that is the dip in pressure is not followed by a uh, rise in the positive pressure and it is because of insensitive setting so all the breaths are going as a ventilator initiated alone although the patient is having adequate breathing effort and negative pressure is being made it that is not triggering a uh, breath so it is because of insensitive settings so again it is show, uh, a wall, uh, flow time uh, scalar showing the auto peep and because of auto peep the patient's efforts are not enough to trigger the ventilator then the last comes a cycle dyssynchrony cycle dyssynchrony is the ventilator's inspiratory flow stop prematurely or continues into the patient's uh, neural expiratory time that is patient start to exhale before the ventilator cycle into expiration so this we can uh, adjust by shortening the inspiratory timing by adjusting adjusting the flow cycle criterion or lowering the pressure support so here basically the patient starts to exhale before the ventilator has cycled into expiration so that is ventilator before uh, shifting from inspiration to expiration or the ventilator while being in inspiration itself the patient starts to exhale so here you can see that there is a pressure spike at the end of pressure time curve there is a spiking uh, that is the patient has started to uh, exhale before the ventilator has gone into expiration and that is a spiking so by we can reduce the inspiratory time the ventilator inspiratory time we can reduce so that that spiking gets eliminated that is depicted by the second graph so these are the like basic ventilator waveforms and ventilator loops and some of the troubleshooters or the some of the problems arising from the uh, ventilation that we can pick up from the ventilator graph 
but it is a very vast topic and has like a lot of uh, uh, like different waveforms but we have uh, discussed almost all the basic waveforms and the basic uh, ventilator uh, wave graphics that we uh, see in the ventilator and that we can like help in monitoring a patient on ventilator and to detect some of the uh, main troubleshooters thank you